Abu Dhabi is a bit of an oasis, isn't it? An amazing circuit, an amazing facility, and uh, everything the teams teams could want. Um, but uh, unfortunately, the live, racing hasn't really lived up to it in the in the previous couple of years. I think we will have some good racing, and the DRS has has helped. But uh, there's a couple of features on the circuit which I think make it uh, perhaps slightly less interesting than it could be. For me, I guess the big feature is the chicanes at the end of the two long straights. Um, and with your asphalt runoff, it's, quite, it's a lot easier to defend uh, the, the passing attempt at the end of the straight. The chicane means you've got the preferential line for the, the following corner, um, and it gives you an, a, chan a chance to either retain or block that position and, and stay in front. So we've, you know, I guess 2010 it had a big influence on the championship outcome. DRS last year made it a bit, uh, a bit more balanced in terms of uh, who would come out on top. And I think this year, probably with the closeness of the cars, we should see, I think, a real, a real good race this time. The timing um, provides a good challenge, actually. It's all a little bit different. We're so used to running um, the second practice qualifying in the race in the afternoon with the highest temperatures. Um, but in Abu Dhabi with the evening or kind of uh, late, late afternoon evening sessions um, for P2 qualifying in the race, they're actually the coolest. And what that means is the uh, track temperatures that we have in, in for P1, P3 are not really representative of the, the key sessions. So it's important to balance how much we uh, take from those sessions, ensure that we, we don't bias too much towards the track temperatures and the tyre performance that we've seen then. Tyre was very difficult to you know, simulate and analyse. The best data is correlation to you know, historical effects. Uh, so we know what happened last year. Um, we know from, you know, through those various sessions what happened with our tyre performance, what happened with our tyre wear. We try to separate out track evolution and the more years of data you have, the better for that. Uh, and likewise, the engineers do the same thing and the drivers when it comes to kind of setup parameters on the car, they need to make sure the car's balanced for the sessions that they're running in to try and get the most out of it, but ensure they keep moving with uh, the improving track conditions and the altering temperatures uh, each time. Circuit-wise, um, it's got two, two long straights and it actually looks like a high-speed circuit. You know, you've got these big long straights where you get a lot of top speed, but actually the corner speeds in general are very slow. Uh, I think it's um, one of the slowest speeds, third or fourth uh, rank that we go to in terms of average corner speeds. So that actually is the kind of key setup parameter to, to getting the most out of those uh, low speed corner entry and exits. We do have a couple of higher speed corners, but actually in qualifying they're generally taken flat, so have less influence on, on the setup compromise that we're trying to make. Abu Dhabi is kind of on its own. It's, uh, um, I guess it's similar to Bahrain in that uh, it's got sand all around it and that sand plays a quite a big role on the track surface. Um, Bahrain has a, a quite a different surface in that it's very open, um, kind of the roughness of the surface. Um, Abu Dhabi, I think the sand seems to have more of an influence on your tyre tire characteristic. It plays a big role in, in how quickly you can get the tyre up to its peak grip level, and so what we call the warm-up phase of the tyre. And over the years that's been uh, really variable with different compounds and different manufacturers. And so that's always something to be aware of. It plays a really big role in our qualifying planning, um, but also can play a role in your strategy decisions in the race. Because if the tyre is quite slow to warm up or reach that peak grip, stopping earlier than someone may not be the uh, correct decision. With the arrival of the Aussie V8s as a support series, I think uh, the track will obviously improve because of the amount of cars cleaning it up but uh, the rubber won't be a different manufacturer and probably not compatible with the uh, F1 rubber due to such a variation in compounds that uh, it may not have a great, uh, or at the start of each session following those support races, the uh, track might change quite a bit. And also um, touring cars tend to use liberal lines over some parts of the circuit so they may drag on a bit of extra sand so that's something we'll be aware of but in general we always like it when there's more support series it just adds a uh, kind of better atmosphere to the race weekend.
Crowley tyre compounds, they're actually the same uh, pairing as we had in 2011. We've got the medium for the prime and the soft for the option. Um, last year, again, there was uh, a reasonably large prime option uh, tyre delta, which influenced uh, strategy quite a lot towards a two-stop. Um, whereas this year, with the uh, two compounds being closer together, we may see a couple more people attempt one-stops, um, provided the tyre life is sufficient. Pit lane layout in Abu Dhabi is an interesting one. Um, the pit entry, pretty straightforward, um, kind of shortcuts the last corner and uh, nice spacing between all the pit boxes so that it should make a nice consistent uh, pit stop performance. But it has the interesting uh, tunnel for the pit exit and we've seen a couple of drivers uh, get a little bit sideways there um, in the past two years and uh, I think it's probably only a matter of time before we see maybe something a little bit more serious there. Uh, but um, so far we haven't had any problems, fingers crossed it won't happen to Williams and the pit loss is uh, very similar to, um, to Daly actually at around 21 seconds for a generic stop. The one thing that the TV doesn't capture is how um, steep the gradient is down, uh, so the pit lane's obviously at the uh, the height of the pit straight, but then it has to drop enough for the car to run right under that through a tunnel. Um, so it's quite steep and downhill with no camber, so the corner's not fast, but the issue comes that the grip level's very low, and obviously slow speed corner, it's uh, very easy to lose a lot of time, and the drivers are at that point trying to either protect their position, get onto the track as quick as they can, or, or jump someone on the track. So they're pushing very hard, um, and also it's not something that they get to, to practice as much and with the difference in grip level from the racing circuit to the pit lane and you've also all of a sudden gone from hot tyres even if they're a bit old to to uh, tyres straight out of the blankets um, it really requires a good driver feel. Once you separate out the stationary time of the teams to the, the moving time that, that the driver is responsible for in pit lane then that can be more variable. I guess the drivers towards the end of the year they've got a lot to play for, um, championship positions on the line particularly when they're close and they know that passing opportunities are, are not that common so uh, they're trying to take any opportunity and uh, the slow speed corners can invite you to, to attack but then all of a sudden you find the uh, gap closes so that can result in issues. I think the race is where you shift out of your, your normal uh, time zone a little bit in terms of uh, your working hours definitely make it a little bit more challenging. I think the only thing I've noticed historically is that uh, they start running a demonstration car there on occasions early in the morning when you're uh, trying to sleep um, and that can certainly wake you up or it gives you a bit of a jolt. You think is that an F1 car on the circuit why, not, why am I still in bed but uh, other than that it's not too bad.